Yeah, like always, we'll start with a warm up on some junky piece of paper. I always have references of K pop boys hanging around that I'm going to reuse before I stick it in the recycling bin. And today we are drawing the Parasolophus mm. duckbill hormone guy. So we're just going to practice a couple of these shapes. My first one that I attempted earlier today got too long and I had to do some surgery and shorten up his body. So we'll take a look at some of those basic shapes. Let's see if I can get them both on here. Maybe not. I'm going to start with this body shape that's kind of half dome, but I like to accentuate the part that's right over the leg, right over the hip. So I can have that part pretty flat. And then round off the rest of it. And like I said, the first time I drew this, I got a little long. So maybe make it a tad shorter than you first think. And then these arms and legs are going to wrap around this body. So I like this shape that I'm seeing a lot in more of the animal artists that I'm following on Instagram. They do this big kind of teardrop sort of quotation mark or comma for that big muscle there. And then for the back legs, that flat portion I'm going to bring right on forward. And this particular dinosaur with the digigrade walks on its toes. So we're going to have those shapes of the calf. And then what we would normally walk on are the foot and then the toes, toe box. And then for the front legs, a little bit similar, we're going to have what we would call the upper arm or human. Coming down and then I put on some generic kind of claw hands. There are uh, some other artists that do these more like a deer and don't have the individual toes like I draw them, but since I'm just cartooning, I like to put the claws on. And their tails most often are drawn just like straight back with very little flexibility. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's how most biological artists are saying their tails may have worked. And then for the head, there's two, two versions that I've seen people do, where some of them just have the bone and there's nothing in between, and then some draw like a membrane or a fin attached in there. So I'm going to try out both versions just so that we have some options. Let's start with the cranium, just a little circle. I'll have another one down here so I can compare my two options. Sticking in the eye fairly high on the circle here. And adding on that duck bill. And the underside, I tend to make the lower one a little bit shorter. Not every artist does. Some of them have them even, whichever style you like better. Go with that one. And 
And then right off of this curve, we're going to extend it to the back. And then a little bit thicker knob back there. And then we'll need the neck for a little bit just so that we can show where this thin type structure would connect in. So just add on a simple little neck. Both my guys here. So one we'll just leave as a bone and then the other one we can see what it looks like when we add that extra element right there. And I'm going to stay consistent with my just filled in black eyes, but if you prefer, you can have a more classic cartoon eye that shows the white. So there's some options for you there as well. So I think we're ready for the real deal. I'm going to grab some cardstock just to give me something a little thicker for my inking later. almost half of this dinosaur is tail. So I am going to put that hump of his body kind of in the middle so that I'll have room on both sides. I'll go ahead and add my tail, just continuing down from the back as far as my paper will let me. Inside there's something with the hip bone that has an extension that goes all the way down there because it's one of the bird hip dinosaurs. So I sometimes put a little indentation there, but other people don't. So again, that's up to you. That was the best thing I learned in class last week is that dinosaurs are split into the ones that have the bird hips, which are the Stegosaurus, Triceratops, pretty much all the ones that walk on four legs, and the reptile hips, which are Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, all the ones that basically stand on two legs. But ironically, a creature that does not have a bird hip is a bird. Birds have reptile hips. I'm like, thanks, science. You made that more confusing than you had to. So now that we've got kind of our body shape, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my neck and my head. So coming off of this kind of protrusion right here, I don't know why, but that's how most artists are showing this dinosaur's build. There's also an interesting little bump in the neck there, little overlapping skin. And then we can place our circle right on top. And we're back into the head options. You can also have your practice page handy if you want to do some of those other options that we explored. I'm going to go ahead and shape the back of the skull here into a little bit more of an angle and place my eye line 
fairly high. And then I'll start adding on the beak. And placing the eye, I like to place it right above the corner of the mouth. And then we'll add the defining feature to the parasololophus. Nice big bone on top. I had an extra ring around the eye just for funsies, but if you don't like it, don't add it. And moving on down to the legs. Same as we did in practice, I'm going to come right off the back of that neck bump and put in this kind of shoulder muscle. And have that first leg going back a little bit before it comes down. And adding on three little fingers. And I'll go ahead and do this big back leg. Starting way up at the top where there's that flatter angle and lightly coming down, almost touching that elbow. And we have the knee right in front there. And the part that would be a shin and a calf on a human. I like to put a little bump for the heel and then coming down for a big three toes on the bottom. The other back leg is highly overlapped, so we only have a little bit sticking out right there. I like to start with the back edge, and I'm going to place the foot a little higher on the paper than the first one.
and that other front leg is going to be on the same walking line as that back foot. I can give myself a very faint guideline if I need to, just to double check. And I'll have that forward curve just like we did on that first leg. Coming down straight. Some artists put like a little dew claw on that leg if you want to. And then some toes. I just take a step back, see if there's anything with my drawing I want to alter before I go to ink. I think I want to make them a little bit chubbier. Make them a little bit on the lean side. And if you'd like to add the kind of the underbelly scales, I went ahead and did it just on the body. But some people do it a little bit down the leg as well. So if you like that look, you can go for that. And once you like your shape, go ahead and take your kneading eraser and use it like a rolling pin all over your drawing. For those of you watching this video later and you don't have a kneading eraser, you can do the same thing with a regular eraser. You just have to be a little bit lighter with it. Let's see if this is a regular eraser. I can still do it. I just have to rub gently so that I don't rub the whole drawing away, but you can get it a little bit lighter that way also. You can go ahead and grab an inking pen. If you don't have inking pens at home, a Sharpie works fine, or a flare pen, pretty much any felt tip pen will work. Remember, you can rotate your paper around when you're inking to get in the most comfortable position for your line.
Hi. Hi, Michaela. Hey. Oh, I like your that. What is that called? What is that dinosaur called? Parasaur. Parasaurolophus. Oh, uh, yeah, I love that dinosaur. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too. I like the duckbill ones. Yeah, same. I like how yours kind of has a little paw. A little what? Yeah, it's, um, it's right front leg kind of looks like a paw. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, their feet are a little bit different than this, but I like the style of feet better. So, I'm just going to do what I like. Yeah. The eye and the line work remind me of, like, um, the Lilo and Stitch style, kind of. I can see that. I didn't try that, but I can see where you're getting it from. The one I'm not sure whether to put or not, some artists will put, like, a ridge let's see if i can find an example of it they put like a ridge on the back and look up para for all of us and i will share my screen for just a minute so i can show you what i'm talking about one earlier. Oh yeah, those little ridges. Yeah, some of them will put like this little ridge on top. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I don't know if I'll put it on mine. But there's all kinds of colors, so I'll go wild with that. Yeah. Or some will put like little spines on the top. Maybe alligator bumps. Huh. There's a lot of different. Wait, these guys different than what I'm thinking of? Because it's like a lot of these guys are like quadrupedal, but the ones I think of are usually portrayed as uh, yeah, it's like the other one. I forget what it's called. <laughs> bi, bi meaning two, like bicycle. Bidrupedal? Yeah, bipedal. Bipedal, bipedal. yeah. But I think in Jurassic Park, they don't use their front legs. I think they just carry them. Like you say, they just walk around the back legs mostly. I uh, yeah. There might be a couple different kinds, though, where some of them use their front legs and some of them don't. Lots of cool colors. Some of these are different dinosaurs. I think they're getting into iguanodons over there. But I kind of like this coloring. Simple, Wait. but effective. Yeah, that's very nice. Is it like one of the, isn't like one of the like main characters oh, from, from A Land Before Time, one of those guys? Yeah, the little green duckbill one. Yeah, she doesn't really have much of a horn as far as I remember though. Yeah. Oh, great one, thank you. Let's see. I think I'll go for... Yeah, I'll go for that coin. I have different colors of markers, though, so it won't be quite like this. <laughs> I'm going to get that trail down. That's what I'm going to use, but um, you guys use whatever you want for your coloring. Just look up Parasololophus. Maybe I'll just write it on my paper since I'm going to do that later. Anyway. And you remember that one like fake dinosaur they made up where it was like um it's basically like a raptor but they have like um fr big old frills like a frilled lizard. Oh, I think you mean Dyfi da di Dof the one with the that they made kind of like a frilled lizard, like the spitter. Is that the one you talked about? Yeah. Yeah, that one. I like it's a real dinosaur, but they haven't found any fossil of the frilled lizard part. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure they can't tell if it's spit acid or not. I doubt it. 
Meh. Who knows? Yeah, there's like a there's like a lizard that can right now that can shoot blood out of its eyes. Yeah. So who knows what, what dinosaurs could have done? Is that like its last line of defense? Yeah, it's just, I'm gonna squirt my own blood at you. I don't know. I think it's kind of like you know how like a squid will spray ink. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's how it's done. Hold on. Liz, hold on. Hold on. Lizard. Shoot. Blood out of eye. Oh yeah, that's a popular popular search. Oh, it's the horned lizards that do that. They squirt oh. blood in self-defense by swelling the and rupturing. This is one of the three horned lizard species that can squirt blood out of its eyes. This is it also uses the mechanism to remove horned particles from the surface of its eyes. That is both gross and fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Wow, there are lots of pictures of it, and it's like a little, and some of them were kind of scary. Yeah, I imagine it's pretty scary too. I've actually got more blue green. I'm gonna do some blues. Yeah, and then it's like a bunch of pictures just have them with blood all over their faces. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't it wouldn't be wild if they like found found like a dinosaur that could do that. Yeah. Even if they found a way to figure out if they could do that. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite like little dinosaur facts. Is that like is about the T Rex and how it doesn't really roar supposedly, and supposedly like it made like this incredibly deep deep sound, kind of like a gator, where it's like it, it traveled through the ground to communicate to other T Rexes, and that's just such a cool concept to me. That sounds more like an elephant. Are elephant sounds like really low sounds? I think I remember seeing something like that on PBS. I don't know. I know gators do it for like mating purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I've never heard like a, an elephant do something like that. All I remember is that they didn't know that elephants had as much language as they did until they had some kind of instrument that could pick up the sound waves that we can't hear with human ears. But don't quote me on that. I'm not sure how you know accurate that is. Yeah, like like whales. Yeah, it's like whales. Well, wait, is this video accurate? That I'm gonna or... What did the... Okay, give me the sound. I don't care about. The... Nope, that's not the sound. That's a... this sound finding a wrong it's relatives in. Using audio editing software, I've replicated what the T-Rex would have sounded like. And for the first time in 66 million years, you're about to hear the distinct... Okay. Like he was there, he knows. T-Rex wouldn't have the need to open its mouth, thanks to closed mouth vocalization. Uh -huh. okay. Birds and reptiles, and the noise would have traveled through vibrations. What did you base it on? This sound would not only be the most terrifying I noise think they found like heard, a, a... but also felt as it vibrated through your spine, getting louder and louder as it drew closer. Chris Packham of the BBC had this to say. There's a sort of primal fear that's associated with sounds like that. He probably explained it, but I skipped over it. <laughs> like, let's get to the good part, right? Yeah. Uh, that was just idle curiosity. I'll look at it later. 
Yeah, but anyway, I just think that's a really cool thing. Yeah. Also, another dinosaur fa fact that I really like is based on real life about how large carnivores are kind of are kind of uh, calm compared to like large herbivores. Hmm. Yeah, because large herb because usually, like I remember, I was reading something about large carnivores. Usually, as long as you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. But a large like herbivore will will kind of take your presence as a threat and attack you almost immediately. Again, I'd like, like to know why they think this. Huh? Because, I mean, are they basing it off of, like, rhinos in real life will charge you or a lion won't? E yeah. I would think that that is, like, a huge brachiosaurus or something. That you wouldn't really need to make a big show of getting other animals out of your feeding territory, but who knows? Yeah, well, yeah, like, uh, you know, you know about hippos, you know? Yeah, like, there are a couple of herbivores that are pretty territorial, so could have been. Yeah, and I like the idea that, that, like, the herbivores are actually, like, really dangerous. That's, like, a funny idea in my yeah. head. You know, part of me is thinking about giving up the perspective idea of this dinosaur dude. Because, Why? Perspective, because perspective is hard. Oh, we can work it out in the next class. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm also I'm messing with it. What's that? Sorry. No, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you just got to break it down to more basic shapes. Because once you get it down to like cubes and That'll be easier. You know what? That's actually a good idea. You know, one of the biggest problems I have is just sort of like angling his foot. Yeah, that's a little tricky, but I think we can do it. Thank you. I think it would be a shame because you've already gotten such a good head and like the. I'm not saying the, completely give up on him. I'm just saying like just uh, like forget the perspective idea and like mess with the wings so they're a little less, you know. Oh, like, so less foreshortened. Yeah, they're not as foreshortened. Oh, yeah, you can try that too. The good thing about digital, you just copy paste, mess with it, see which one works better. Yeah, that's a really yeah, that's a really really nice thing about that. Or can you just share your file with me and then I'll be able to see it more clearly? Wait, I can do that? Can you? I think you can upload it to the chat, but if not, let me know. Okay, hold on, give me a second. Okay, uh, just let me save, save, and go here, oh no wait, I need to up that, go here, oh, file, Dropbox, hmm, oh wait, I should probably go to my computer, because I don't really ever use Dropbox. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I know we have it set up for all the artwork, but now that most of my artwork is at home, no real need for it. Uh, I think the screen's too dark. OK, 
Okay, desktop, club, no, 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 no. Okay. PC, desktop. Sure. Oh yeah. Recently, I've been trying to organize my files a bit more mm -hmm. because I kept like I kept losing them and having to look through them or just getting tired of looking for them. So I make an yeah. entirely new thing. Yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> I'm looking through it, especially when I name them things like almost done or now really almost done. Final. Like, Whoops, which one's which? Okay, just where are you? There you are. And boom, there he is. Oh, what? Chat. Let's see. I can get to it. Oh, yeah, cool. All right, let's try that out next class. Yeah. It's fun. I think it's fun, like, doing class like this and then, like, using little features that I probably ne would never use on my own. <laughs> Learn something new every day, right? Yeah. You know, after I finish this guy, I really want to finish him. I've shown him to my mom, and my mom says she really loves this drawing and hopes I finish it. Yeah, I think this will be one of your best, honestly. Yeah, thanks. I also kind of want to like take a like take a hit at some of the other characters. Mhm. Mm and then, like after doing some of the other dinosaur characters, then maybe try to do the dino like the human character. Is Mm, he's mm, he's not great at design, but eh, you know whatever. Yeah, it depends on if it's fun or not, right? Yeah. Sometimes I get nervous that it, that I'm worried that like my drawings don't like carry the same spirit as like the show. Mhm. Mm show did, but you know, I'm just doing this for fun. Yeah. But, but I'm not like I'm not gonna like actually make a reboot of. Now, part of me also, like, I've been thinking about, like, the other characters' designs, and I think about, like, the girl, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like, a stereotypical girl one. Yeah. Is, a uh, is a, um, the horned one, the stick is, no, the triceratops, yeah, that's it. And part of me kind of wants to, like, change her body type, because, you know, yeah, she's right. kind of, yeah, because okay. Yeah, I want to make I want to make it somewhat more like that, but I don't know. I but I don't know if like like I want to, but it you know I'll, I'll just decide when I get to it. Yeah. Yeah. I've also thought about like redesigning their civilian clothes, but part of me kind of likes like the weird '90s fashion that these guys wear. <laughs> yeah, make it nostalgic, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like how it's like the girl one, where it's like what I like to call Guy Fieri pants. Oh. Which are kind of like just like black pants that have flames on the bottom. Really? I've never yeah. watched the guy's show, so I don't know. Yeah, he's one of the things he's famous for is wearing like a black t shirt with flames on it. Oh. Um, like the old motorcycle type flames, like hot rod flames? Yeah. Got it.
My dinosaur is walking through grape jelly. I don't know why I thought purple would be a good shadow color, but there you have it. Now I know. It's a little light for a shadow, but it, against yeah. white, it, but it, but it's against white, so it can be like excuse, like it can be like uh, reasonable. Let me see if I got a darker purple. Maybe if I do two layers, it'll be better. No, nah, not really. You know, also one thing weird thing about these characters is each of them had like uh elemental theme that I don't think ever brought up in the show. Like the fl the flying dude is air, the girl is fire, the leader dude is water, even though canonically he was afraid of water. And there was an entire episode about it. Um and then the like the big dude is earth, but I don't think they ever actually go into like the theming other than like design level. Huh. What's the point then? I don't know. Like, like I almost want to say kung fu style, but yeah, I don't think they're actually very good at kung fu because the show literally said that they learned kung fu from watching TV. Yeah, I don't think they're very good then. <laughs> If only that were possible. Yeah. Just about eight minutes left. Do you have anything like unpopular that you remember from your childhood? Unpopular? Yeah, like not like a classic thing, like a show or anything, but or movie, but something you really liked as a kid. Um, I was pretty much into the main stuff, like Care Bears, My Little Pony, Rainbow Bright. There was one called Sweet Seed I used to love. She was a Little Mermaid. But she only has one, like, movie, I think. What else? Mm -hmm. Something not popular. Oh, I think I did pretty much mainstream stuff. Uh. It's about that time. Are you going to show our work or not? No, thank you. But I'm going to unpin my video and anything you'd like to share, do it now. He almost looks like he's going to a rave or like uh, in like black light. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that a lot. How are those markers? Pretty good? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. All right. Cool. Do you want cool. to do the little stuff I did with the, the, the guy or do you want to wait for next class? Yeah, you can show what you got on your guy. Let me put on screen sharing. Yep. Yep. Here it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, see, I think we can fix it. Oh yeah, it's still looking better. Yeah, yeah I decided to give him three toes instead of two. Mm-hmm. 
good yeah. point. Yeah, and they're just trying to, you know, accentuate is like make it just look smaller than that one, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, yep, get all the visual cues in line. Yep, we can work on that. Or I'll stop sharing. All right, well, that is it for this week. I'll see some of you in the next class and some of you next time. Thank right, you bye. and goodbye.